If you only know Christopher Nolan from films like Oppenheimer, Interstellar, or Inception, you need to watch this recap to witness the brilliance of his storytelling. I invite you to predict the plot of this movie, but I can guarantee that all your guesses will be wrong. While writing this recap, I tried to guess the storyline, but all I could do was marvel and say, damn, the plot of this film is incredibly well written and unpredictable by anyone. This film was adapted from the novel The Prestige, written by Christopher Priest in 1995. The film is set in the 1890s in London. The opening scene features a magic performance by Robert Anger on stage, where he can make himself disappear and reappear in a different location. However, a fatal mistake occurs when Anger falls below the stage and into a large water tank used for another magic trick, where he is locked inside. Alfred Borden, who accidentally goes below the stage to uncover Anger's magic secret, ends up being accused of murdering Anger. The scene shifts to a courtroom. Robert Anger's assistant, John Cutter, gives testimony about the events that occurred at the end of the magician's performance. He saw someone go below the stage and follow them. The person he saw was Borden, Anger's rival magician. The prosecutor then questions Cutter about his job. The middle-aged man explains that he is an engineer who designs illusions and creates equipment for Anger's performances. The prosecutor continues questioning whether the water tank was part of Anger's illusion. Cutter states that the tank was for the first trick, which had been moved to the basement. He accuses Borden of moving the tank directly under where Anger would fall. His statement prompts the prosecutor to ask more questions. This time, Cutter has to explain how Borden could have moved the large tank below the stage without anyone knowing. Cutter believes that a magician like Borden could accomplish such a feat. The judge then asks Cutter to explain how Anger's illusion worked. Cutter explains that the real transported man is the most popular illusion and he feels entitled to sell it, so if he reveals how it works, the trick will lose its value. The judge asks Cutter to explain the magic trick in detail only to him so that the judge can determine whether the trick is relevant to the case or not. The story continues with a man visiting a prison. The man named Mr. Owens is a lawyer representing the institution of Lord Colblow, a renowned magician and historian. He manages to meet Borden and negotiates to buy Borden's magic trick. The offered price is £5,000. Upon hearing this, Borden asks Mr. Owens to speak to Fallon, his engineer, because the money would also be his. Mr. Owens claims he has already talked to Fallon and has permission to obtain all of Borden's illusions except the most expensive one, the transported man. This is Borden's best magic trick. Owens then mentions Borden's daughter and the impending hanging sentence Borden is rumored to face. Mr. Owens asks if Borden is still unwilling to give up the trick considering his daughter will need financial support. Moreover, Fallon risks losing custody of Borden's daughter, leaving the little girl an orphan. Briefly, Mr. Owens offers cooperation to take care of Borden's daughter and provide for her needs through the institution of Lord Colblow on the condition that Borden gives up his valuable magic trick. Before leaving, the man hands over Robert Anger's diary. It contains notes from when Anger was studying Borden's magic trick in Colorado. As Borden reads Anger's diary, the story shifts to Anger's journey in Colorado. Upon arriving, Anger goes to a peak not far from the station. His purpose there is to meet a scientist named Nikola Tesla. Anger is interested in using Tesla's machine for his magic. However, a guard named Ali cannot arrange a meeting between Anger and Tesla for unclear reasons. While reading Anger's notebook, Borden recalls the first time he met Anger. Anger and Borden were initially colleagues working together as assistants to a magician. They pretended to be audience members who would assist the magician in performing his tricks. The most dangerous trick often performed was escaping from a tank filled with water, where the assistant on stage would have their wrists and ankles tied and be placed into the locked water tank. The assistant was Julia, who was Anger's wife. Also present was Cutter, the engineer providing the magic props. One day, Anger and Borden were assigned to investigate the magic tricks of Chung Ling Su. They observed that Chung Ling Su's aquarium trick was a stage act. Su pretended to walk hunched over to hide the aquarium between his legs. Among Anger and Borden, only Borden saw this as a dedication to art. At the same time, Anger considered magic a means to make money. Borden had great ambitions and ideas to create more captivating illusions in their magic performances. One of his ideas was to change the knot tied to Julia to a double fort knot, hoping it would work. However, Julia couldn't untie the knot and eventually died from suffocation inside the tank. On the day of Julia's funeral, Anger asked what knot Borden used to tie Julia. With a distressed look, Borden replied that he didn't know. This incident became the root of their rivalry. The sorrow of losing his wife made Anger furious and vengeful towards Borden, especially when he saw that Borden had a small family with a wife and child while he had to live in the grief of losing his wife. 
Now Borden and Anger had separated and were running their magic businesses. Borden returned to performing magic with the idea of catching a bullet. However, Anger came and put a button in the pistol used, which injured Borden and caused him to lose two of his fingers. Sometime later, Borden attended Anger's performance, which was now performed under the name The Great Danton. Borden watched Cutter's act during The Great Danton performance. The scene shifted to Anger's diary, which Borden was reading, where Anger was frustrated because his trip to Colorado had yielded no results. Eventually, Tesla's assistant, Ali, visited Anger at his hotel. Ali took Anger to a place where Tesla's research was demonstrated, showing dozens of lamps in the ground that lit up automatically without wires. Ali called it science, while Anger, amazed, called it real magic. A few days later, Ali introduced Anger to Tesla. There, Tesla showcased some of his scientific works. This convinced Anger that Tesla could create a machine for his magic needs. However, Tesla warned Anger that great obsession could make a person very selfish. The story returns to a flashback, where Anger is spying on Borden's performance, initially intending to harm him. But this time, he refrained because Borden's performance showcased a new trick that fascinated Anger. The trick was called the Transported Man. In a conversation between Anger Cutter and his new assistant Olivia, they analyzed Borden's last performance where an impossible trick needed to be replicated in their show. Cutter argued that Anger needed to find someone who looked like him. However, Olivia countered that the two people in Borden's performance were actually Borden himself, evidenced by both individuals having Borden's missing fingers. Anger then decided to find an actor who looked like him and saw his lookalike root. In his performance, Anger showcased the transported man and received great applause. The show was a success, but while celebrating, Anger still felt intrigued by Borden's transported man trick. Anger had a strong ambition to surpass Borden, so he tasked Olivia, his assistant, to work undercover and spy on Borden. However, it was challenging for Olivia because Borden already knew she was Anger's assistant. Olivia was tasked with pretending to defect to Borden. Since Olivia had fallen in love with Anger, she obeyed his orders. The next day, Olivia met Borden in his office and revealed all of Anger's secrets to him, including the identity of Anger's lookalike actor. Olivia did all this under Anger's orders to gain Borden's trust. During Anger's next performance, Borden came to disrupt it based on Olivia's information. Borden managed to take over the show by capturing Root Anger's lookalike actor and moving Anger's landing spot for the transported man, causing Anger to break his leg permanently. Borden's act on stage made the audience laugh and declared Anger's performance a comedy, not magic. After the show, Anger confronted Olivia angrily, accusing her of improving Borden's performance. However, Olivia denied it, saying it was all done at Anger's request. Still arguing, Olivia handed Anger Borden's medical notebook. Driven by his ambition to uncover Borden's secrets, Anger took the notebook. Olivia was ordered to return it that night and leave Borden. However, Olivia confessed that she had fallen in love with Borden and couldn't leave him. In the end, Anger felt guilty and left, saying he would go to Borden's office to mess up his belongings, creating a scenario where Borden's notebook would appear to have been stolen by Anger. When Anger read Borden's notebook, he saw it was written in codes he could not understand. The following night, across the street, Anger was followed by Fallon, Borden's engineer. Anger led Fallon to a place that turned out to be a trap. Fallon was captured and put in a box. Anger intended to trade Fallon for Borden's magic trick secret. During their meeting, Borden was asked to write down his magic trick on paper. When the negotiation ended, Anger met with Cutter and read the note which said T-E-S-L-A. The story shifts back to the present with Borden reading Anger's notebook in his cell. He continued reading, this time recounting the final meeting between Anger and Tesla, who was testing the machine ordered by Anger. The machine was designed at Anger's request, who wanted a device to transport a person to a different place. He did this to make his The Transported Man trick genuinely real. However, the machine being tested had some issues. This time, Tesla tested a living object and placed it in the machine, but the object didn't move and eventually evaporated. Waiting outside Tesla's house, Anger saw the tested living object now appear as two creatures. There were also Anger's hats from previous tests. Tesla and Ali admitted that all the hats belonged to Anger. Tesla asked Anger for more time to perfect the machine. The next day, when Anger returned to Tesla's house, it was burned down. Returning to his hotel, Anger found the machine he had ordered there with a farewell note from Tesla. Anger's notebook also described an incident where he was testing the machine. The story then returns to the present, where Borden's daughter visits him in prison with Mr. Owens. Mr. Owens was still persistent in buying Borden's The Transported Man trick in exchange for his daughter's custody under his institution's care. 
Borden handed over a piece of paper containing his magic trick, which only included the pledge and the turn. Borden promised to give the final part, the prestige, after Mr. Owens brought his daughter to revisit him before his execution day. The story then flashed back to Borden's past, where he argued with his wife Sarah. Sarah accused Borden of having an affair with his assistant Olivia. Sarah was fed up with Borden's secret of life. Borden had never been honest with Sarah, making her feel that the Borden she knew had changed. After the argument Sarah decided to end her life. The scene then shifted back to the notebook Borden was reading, where Andrew had returned from Colorado with his machine. Cutter met him in a building where Andrew demonstrated how the machine worked. Cutter was astonished to see Andrew transported by the machine, capturing the attention of investors. They began planning Andrew's most fantastic show. Andrew's performance began. Andrew introduced a groundbreaking new act with the machine among the audience, including Borden. Andrew created a flash of light around him, then disappeared and reappeared behind the audience seats. The show was a huge success, with the audience cheering. However, Borden observed that it was just a simple trick with a trapdoor under Andrew's feet when he disappeared. Andrew's show was top-rated in London, leaving Borden frustrated as his rival gained significant fame. Andrew performed repeatedly until one day, Borden attended Andrew's show again. This time, he disguised himself to inspect the machine up front and managed to sneak backstage. This was the plot twist hinted at the beginning of the film. Borden, walking backstage, saw Andrew falling directly into the water tank. Borden was confused because he had done nothing to cause Andrew to fall into the tank. Borden tried to break the tank's glass but failed until Cutter arrived and witnessed Andrew's death. The scene then shifted to the courtroom where Borden was sentenced to death for the incident. Cutter had to deal with the aftermath until Mr. Owens approached him. Cutter sold all Andrew's magic props to Lord Caldwell's institution, except for the transported man machine. Cutter refused Mr. Owens' offer to sell the machine, stating he wanted to destroy it. Cutter told Mr. Owens that if he wanted to buy the machine, he must destroy it later. Mr. Owens instructed Cutter to meet Lord Caldwell with the machine. Back in the present, Borden, still in prison, was visited by his daughter as requested before his execution day. This time, the person accompanying Borden's daughter was Lord Caldwell, who turned out to be Angier. Borden was shocked to see that Lord Caldwell was Angier. Borden was terrified at the thought of leaving his beloved daughter in the care of his enemy. Borden begged Angier to relinquish custody of his daughter, offering a piece of paper with his final magic trick. However, Angier arrogantly said he no longer needed it because he had everything and, and tore up the paper. Cutter visited the home of Lord Caldwell, who was associated with a magic institution. To his astonishment, Cutter discovered that Lord Caldwell was Angier as Cutter had seen Angier's body lying in the autopsy room. Cutter realized that he had unknowingly imprisoned Borden. Andrew then instructed Cutter to move the, the transported man machine into his new theater. The day of Borden's execution arrived. Before it, Borden met with Fallon and instructed him to care for his child. The execution was carried out. That night, Cutter delivered the, the transported man machine, and Andrew was also present. After a brief conversation, Cutter left. Andrew, still there, noticed someone approaching. Expecting Cutter, he was surprised to see Borden, who then shot Andrew. Andrew was stunned by Borden's trickery. It was revealed that Borden had a twin brother. They alternated lives, the real Borden loved Sarah, while Fallon loved Olivia. However, they always switched roles, explaining why Sarah and Olivia found Borden to have different personalities. Fallon even cut off his fingers to look like Borden, but the one in front of Andrew was the real Borden, who had a child and loved Sarah. In his final moments, Andrew revealed the secret of his trick. However, Borden interrupted him, expressing his indifference. Andrew then died at Borden's hands. Borden stood and walked toward the exit. However, his curiosity about the machine's secret grew with each step. He turned to look around and was shocked to find several glass boxes beside him containing many dead bodies of Andrew. The film ended.